welcoming words. And I'd like now like to invite uh, Lele Tayabji, a legend in herself, who's worked for Dustica, who probably embodies all these notions of design, product, process, policy, transformative leadership, and of course, human communities, building human life. Lele Tayabji. A recent book, a proposed book by Divya Patra, which I was just sent to see, part of a proposed exhibition at the VNA in London next year, puts contemporary Indian design, fashion, interiors, graphic communication into a neat, colorful box, all ordered and arranged in sequence. Of course, Indian design, like Indian life, isn't like that. India is a huge, messy, chaotic, multi-layered country with everything going on at different tangents. No sooner do you come to one conclusion than you discover something that completely contradicts it. For example, just as you conclude that traditional Indian design is all about color and ornamentation and excess, you encounter Kerala and the austere monotones of its off-white textiles edged with gold, the flowing, simple, shallow lines of its ulis. You decide that Indian motives are all floral jars, butas, and interlocking lines, and you are reminded of the black and white and red dramatic stripes of Naga shores and the checkered patterning of irical weaves. Men weave and women embroider in Kashmir, men, the men embroider, and in Assam, the women weave, and so on and on. Another almost universally accepted truism is that design is the diametric opposite of science, a rather frivolous fringe activity fit only for girls looking for husbands. Parents urging their sons to go into engineering or medicine shudder at the thought of fashion or that he might opt to be that effete object, a designer. It escapes the average layman that every surgical instrument and piece of medical equipment needs to be designed in order to fulfill its function and that engineering and design are practically twin brothers. For the layman, design means surface ornamentation making things look pretty. Wrong, wrong. I think it was Steve Jobs who said, design is not just what it looks like and feels like, design is how it works. Then you come to craft. People in my sector are divided into purists who think that Indian craft is a sacred stream that has never deviated from its Vedic roots, despite an occasional twist or buffet, thanks to the influence of the Mughals or British and who shudder that, the, that modern designers, by turning tradition into market-led product, are polluting that poor stream, pure stream. The other lobby feels that Indian craft is static, boring, and repetitive, and that only the injection of contemporary art school-led Western design can transform it into something relevant. Both schools ignore the fact that craft has always been a market-led activity that evolves and adapts itself with the lifestyles, needs, and demands of its consumers. We may think that all kachi embroidery is the same generic mirror work, but actually, every one of the half dozen tribal communities in that area has its own distinctive motive and stitch directory. A, rab a rabari embroiderer can date a piece within a decade by the colors, motives, and placement and the raw materials available at that time. The dilemma today is not that craftspeople do not want to respond to new trends, but that they are distanced from their end user in ways that were never the case before. Therefore, they find it difficult to understand and keep up with the pace of change. And urban designers are similarly distanced from the craft tradition, a divide that both technology and urban design can bridge. Similarly, the choice is not an either or of technology or handcraft. Each has its place and purpose, and a linking of both would create an exciting and necessary dynamic. These days, a huge debate is on regarding far loom versus hand loom, with many movers and shakers, including bureaucrats and politicians, affirming that hand loom is irrelevant and dead a sunset industry, as one very senior bureaucrat said to me recently. A fact, by the way, 
not validated by any market survey. In actual fact, sales of the handicraft and handloom sector increase by 18 to 20 percent each year. It is a niche market, but it's a growing one internationally as well as nationally. So rather than throw away handloom, and with them the countless amazing textiles and motives that the far loom can never replicate, let's apply technology and all those brilliant young IIT minds on working on the structure and processes of the handloom and see in what way it can be adapted and made less labor intensive while retaining its inherent strengths. A weaver in Kanchipuram has just won an award, in fact, for adapting his loom so he can operate it single-handedly rather than requiring an additional trained apprentice. I can think of dozens of other craft processes, from dhokra metal casting to lark bangle making, where little science would ease the lives of these fantastic creative artists and give them the space to innovate and explore. This goes from processing of raw material to developing appropriate packaging for the finished product. We are fortunate in India to have both living traditional craftspeople with extraordinary hand skills, as well as scientists and technocrats capable of sending satellites into space. Both sectors have some of the liveliest minds and talents. Alas, the two seldom meet. Design, craft, and fashion are customarily seen as soft disciplines, science and technology as, half, as tough. In fact, like a man and a woman, a partnership between the two results in a powerful creative energy. We need to unbox the assets, attributes, and professional skills in each of these sectors, sharing knowledge, awareness, and skill set, creating a unique synergy and potential, and enriching our wonderful country in the process. Thank you. Well, thank you, Leto. 